Is it difficult to play the bagpipes? Well, my name's Alec from Get Bagpipe Ready, and I'm here to get you to be confident in playing the practice chanter so you can get a set onto the set of the big bagpipes. And bagpipes are the easiest instrument I play. I'm going to give you four reasons why the bagpipes are the easiest instrument I play. And also by the end of this video, you're going to be able to play your own tune on the chanter. Uh, so if you have a chanter kicking around the house, go and grab it. If you have a chanter, but you haven't played in a while, click like on this video because this is the video for you. And you'll definitely want to check out my free uh, guide in the description below. It's a, a guide that'll help you get bagpipe ready. It's my three simple step method. Um, but without any further ado, this is the song you're going to learn in this video. So it's a version of Hot Cross Buns. It's just a bit of fun on the practice chanter just to show you how easy it is to actually learn the bagpipes. So rule number one why it's easy to uh, learn the bagpipes is there's only nine holes. You have 10 fingers, so you have a spare finger to holes. Uh, the nine holes, the bottom hand is our right hand. It goes on the bottom. Top hand is the left hand. It goes on the top, hence bottom and top. You'll re hear me refer to bottom hand, top hand quite a bit. So our bottom hand, uh, there's a hole for all fingers, no hole for the thumb. The thumb's on the back. On our practice chanter, our fingers aren't curled up like on a, on a flute or penny whistle. They're more flat and that helps our fingers spread out more and actually cover the holes. So we're actually, instead of the tip of our finger being on that chanter, we're playing more with the pad. So we're covering the holes that way. On the top hand, our pinky doesn't have a hole. The three fingers on the top and the thumb on the back. So there's only nine holes and why is that easy? Well, you know, when we look at uh, instruments like flutes and clarinets, they have saxophones. They have all these keys, the fingers have holes, and they also have all these keys to jump forward and back and around to. You know, that's pretty challenging. We think of the banjo or guitar, uh, it has all these different frets and that hand's having to jump around everywhere. Now, as tough as it is, and it is tough to find those holes, especially as a newbie, beginner bagpiper, find those holes is so tough. Once your fingers find those holes, the holes don't go anywhere. It's not like there's a hidden hole over here that now your finger has to find when you get more experience or there's a, a crazy uh, key that your finger has to jump over and touch. No, the, the nine holes are there to stay. They're really tough to find on the onset, but once your fingers find them, you got them. Um, and if you aren't sure if you've found them, you can just work at covering all the holes and then blow into the chanter. <laughs> and you should get that nice low G sound. If you're not, if you're getting some squeaks and squawks, just pause, look down and see, okay, what, what fingers are missing the holes, reset, and then blow into it again. And finding the holes is really, really um, challenging initially, but once you got it, you got it. Um, and I'll just show you how easy it is with that tune. So hot cross buns, our first note is a C. So for the C note, the top hand isn't really doing anything this whole entire song. That's yet another reason why, why the bagpipes can be quite, quite easy, an easy instrument. Both hands aren't doing too much action at once. Um, grace notes, yes, but, but you know it's not like chording with the piano where one hand is doing a completely different melody to the other hand and they're, they're playing, they're having to match this together. In the big pipes, one hand, the low hand or the high hand is doing a lot of the note changes. The other hand is doing zero note changes. It's, it's only adding into some grace notes, but, but that's more of a supplement thing. It's, it's, it's not like two separate hands doing two separate melodies at all. So yet another reason, reason number two, why uh, the chanter is so easy. So uh, we have our C, so our top hand, all the fingers are on the hole, the thumb is on the hole on the back. Our bottom hand, the top finger of the bottom hand and the bottom finger of the bottom hand are on the holes and the two middle fingers are off and that's our low C. So go ahead, grab your chanter, play the low C. And I say low C when really I don't have to say low C because third reason why the bagpipes are one of the easiest instruments I think you could play. There is only one octave plus one extra note. An octave has eight notes 
the bagpipes have nine notes. So it's an octave plus an extra note. So I say low C, but really I can just say C in the bagpipes because there's no high C. There's only one C on the chanter. And I mean, I play the trumpet and the trumpet, you have to go up and down all kinds of octaves and it's all done. You know, there's only three keys on the trumpet. So it's all done with your mouth. You have to blow harder, harder, softer, softer, not too hard, just right to hit that note you exactly want to hit amongst all these octaves. The bagpipes, there's only one octave. Yes, it takes a while to be able to build up your air and blow. Um, and I get that quite a lot from beginner chanter players. It's, it's a lot of effort to blow. There's things you can do, you know, over time you'll build up that endurance. You can put a dental elastic on your around your reed to make it a little bit easier, or you can look to buy easier chanter reeds. Um, there's reed wranglers you can put on the top of your chanter, which uh, you know I've learned about recently from one of uh, my students. So there's lots of different ways to make that blowing easier. And also, once you get that blowing, it's not like okay now you have to learn how to blow harder for the higher octaves, lower for the easier octaves. It, it's the same, it's kind of like those notes. Once your fingers find those nine holes, you got it. Once you figure out the blowing, you build up that endurance to blow, you got it. It doesn't change after that. There's only one octave, there's only one power to blow. And as a bonus, when you get to the real bag pipes, the bag does most of the blowing for you. You just have to fill up that bag and you squeeze with your arm. Yes, it's tough to get that coordination, but your arm power does most of the work rather than with the practice chanter, your, your cheek power is, your breath is doing a lot of the work. So we have our low C, as I could just say C for the bagpipes. So that's what your C should sound like. If it's not sounding quite like a C, check and make sure you got all the holes covered. Check that that thumb's covering the hole at the back. So we're at the C, we're going down one note down in the scale to B. Now B, transition from C to B, we're going to lift our bottom pinky. At the same time, we're going to drop our middle finger of our bottom hand. And that ring finger just stays up off the hole. And then we finally drop that ring finger down to low A. And that's the hot cross buns, hot cross buns. And you can, you can hear I'm not much of a singer, I'm more of a piper, <laughs> but I do enjoy singing from time to time. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. And I think one reason why people think the bagpipes is so tough is they go about learning it the wrong way. They try to do all these boring exercises and it's like beating your head against the wall and saying, oh, my head is going to get stronger if I keep beating it against the wall. You know, to do all these boring exercises like, like doing triplet or uh, grace notes the whole way up and down the scale and doublings the whole way up and down the scale. That's really challenging when your fingers haven't even found the holes. I know for me, I learned the bagpipes as a kid, but for me, learning other instruments as an adult, I really, the thing I want to do is learn songs. I want to learn tunes. And when I get learning a tune, that's when my brain enjoys it and that's when I stick with it. And if you want to get consistent and stay consistent with your piping, again, I have that three-step guide down below in the show description. Uh, just click on that. It's completely free and it'll take you to that link where you can get that three-step guide to get bagpipe ready. And that's really the number one rule of learning the bagpipes is staying consistent, doing a little bit every day. So what we have so far is, you know, we're learning the holes, yes, we're learning the fingering, yes, but also we're learning a tune and that's super fun for our brains and that's what's going to help us stay consistent. So again, let's review what we have so far. So I added in what we're gonna what we're gonna do to finish off the tune there. And as you heard, it was all still on the same three notes. I just we're doing some embellishments now, some triplets. And that is one thing that beginner bagpipers struggle with is technique on the embellishments. 
So we're going to jump right into uh, embellishment here, the triplet. And this is a great one because you're learning the G grace note, the, the grace note of the top finger of the top hand. So it just goes up off the hole and back on the hole. None of the other fingers are doing anything. So our next great note, grace note is our D grace note. D is in doggy. <laughs> so that's the top finger of the bottom hand. None of the other fingers are doing anything and it's normal because your brain hasn't wired in which finger is doing what. It's normal to have you want to lift one finger only and a few other fingers volunteer to help out. It takes a while to, to get those other fingers not to jump in and only lift the one that you're, you're telling your hand to lift. So just be patient with yourself. Yes, it takes a while. It can feel challenging. But again, this is, I don't know what, if we're up to number four now. The number four reason why I think bagpipes is one of the easier instruments to learn is the repetition. Um, because once you get that G grace note, it's the same G grace note that's played in, you know, 99.99% of the bagpipe tunes out there. And not only it's just a G grace note, but it's played in the triplet. The triplet starts with the G grace note. It's played in the doubling. The doubling starts with that G grace note. It's played in the Torlueth. It's played in the toilet, so that G grace note, it's repeated so much in so many different things. So once you nail down that G grace note, you just fit it into different sequences of embellishments. So there's a lot of repetition in that. But again, it's, it's the onset of playing the pipes that's so tough. It's the start, is a struggle, a huge struggle. Just figuring out where the fingers go on the chanter, sticking with it, staying consistent is the tough part. Once you get to the fun stuff, um, it's a lot easier to stay consistent. And once you see the repetition and once you figure out those nine holes, you figure out the, the breathing, you know, then you you really improve exponentially. So you're going to put in a lot of effort into your piping, see no results, and then all of a sudden you're going to really start climbing and improving. That's, that's what I've seen in instruments. I've learned as an adult as well. Um, so let's get into these triplets. I, I might be stalling you a bit because they're a bit scary, but I know you can do them. So we got our first grace note, the G. Second grace note, the D. And then our last grace note here for to complete the triplet, hence three triplet, is our E grace note. So that's our ring finger or our bottom finger of our top hand. So here's the full triplet. So that's our full triplet. But for hot cross buns, we need a, we need another note on that. So instead of doing a grace, another grace note, we're gonna just do a strike. So we're gonna strike down and up. So really, if you think about it, it's the opposite of a triplet where we're going, or a grace note where we're going up and down. We're going to do a strike, so we're going to strike down, then up with that pinky on the bottom hand. Now that's going to feel super challenging right now if your fingers haven't figured out where the holes are on the chanter yet. Um, but remember, once your fingers figure out where those holes are, the holes don't move around or go anywhere, there's no extra keys or anything. So keep at it it's effort well invested because once your fingers get it they got it um so keep at that and it's it's a fun way to learn uh by, by doing this tune rather than tackling the whole scale there's lots of tricky transitions especially going from the bottom to the top hand when we just try to jump into the scale right away that's why i've chosen this hot cross buns because we're we're not worrying about those tricky transitions at all. We're just we're just worrying about about learning a tune as quickly as possible to give your brain that dopamine hit saying, "Hey, yeah, this is fun. I can be a bagpiper." And you can, cuz it's not one of the hardest instruments out there.
despite what you read on the internet. So here we go. We have our triplet, then our strike. So we have our triplet strike, and then we're going to do the same sort of thing, except we're going to do it on the B one note up, and we're going to get to that B by a grace note. So this is a tricky one. We're going to transition up a note using that G grace note. So we're going from low A to B, but we're getting there using our G grace note. And a good way, good way to think of this is your G grace note, that finger should be the first to leave and the last to come down on the hole. So you can exaggerate it like that a little bit just to get used to it, but eventually it will, it will quicken up and you don't have to lift that top finger really high like I'm exaggerating for, uh, for you watching at home. And once we're at that B, we're going to complete the triplet. We've already done the first part of the tri triplet, that G grace note. Finish off our triplet. Easy peasy. We've already done the D and the E grace note before on the low A. Again, this is where the repetition comes in. And now the strike at the B is very similar to the A, except instead of dropping one finger down and up, now we're striking down with two fingers down and up. And ideally, both those fingers are going to hit their holes. And if you're not really hearing that, more than likely they're missing the holes, but be patient. Work with yourself. Again, finding the holes is probably the toughest part of learning the pipes and it's this part you start with unfortunately that's just how it goes um, but once you get through that you're really going to start improving exponentially so keep at it so let me just review those triplets once more so we end off exactly how we started again you see how the repetition comes in So that phrase is played exactly the same, twice at the start. We have our triplet A strike, grace note up to B, finish off the triplet on B, B strike, and then that same phrase just walking down the scale from the C down to the low, sorry, C down to B down to low A. So if you enjoyed this video, if you've gotten inspired to play the bagpipes, to buy a practice chanter, to be the best 50 bucks you ever spend, especially if you get bagpipe ready and get on the great Highland bagpipe set, um, you know, just like my video. Again, if you, uh, you really want to get consistent with your practicing, you'll definitely want to check out my three-step guide to get bagpipe ready in the description below this video. It's been great to have you. Keep practicing, be inspired, do a little bit every day, look for some fun tunes to learn, keep your brain engaged and having fun with playing. And that's the key to keep you moving forward through this really hard beginner stage of finding those holes on your practice chanter. And those holes don't move when you get to the chanter on the big bag pipes either. They're the same holes, the same places. So just, just keep at it and you're going to get it. Thanks for watching. This has been Alec from Get Bagpipe Ready. Bye for now.